This sermon is titled This is God's will be enriched as you listen. Okay so today uh, we are looking at this topic of God's will. Okay this whole thing of God's will and today's uh, message is titled This is the will of God. You know as a person growing up as a person who became a believer um when I was young and in, in college uh Uh, pretty soon it was i was in an evangelical circle and pretty soon we got to you know this whole thing of god's will okay this is part of the conversation uh, so it's like uh, i want to do this but i don't know if it's god's will or not right um i i i'm i think i should do uh, you know maybe study this and do this course or get this job but but i don't know what god's will is uh, have you have you had that kind of conversation you know i i need to know what god's will is right and um, and especially you know when we had this youth camp okay so we went to the youth camp and all the questions will be about god's will and uh, so how do i find out god's will and pretty soon later i mean i just found out that behind that question was another question right behind that question was who is mr right or who is miss right for me right who is the right person you know who should i marry whom should i you know that was the question behind this whole god's will thing and uh, so that was the exciting part of god's will wanting to know what god's will is but the other part was also that god's will was shrouded in mystery and god's will was like i don't know man i don't know if it will if i'll know or not right so today we are going to look at a very birds eye view of god's will you know just to it's an exhortation to encourage us to seek god's will and to pursue god's will for our lives right uh, but to get into the nuts and bolts of god's will i just want to recommend two books right written by pastor uh, pastor ashish two book one is two books one is fulfilling god's purpose for your life right and the other one is receiving god's guidance okay if you're making note of it you can just make a note of it receiving god's guidance and fulfilling god's purpose for your life so it has the nuts and bolts and gets into the details of hearing god's voice and and so on so it's a wonderful resource um if you want to you know i think definitely it's a good read and by the way we have our book table uh, our books are there available and it's free all those who stood up first time visitors please do visit the book table and please take a copy and um, you know our, our books are a theological education by themselves so uh, very excited about our publications ministry right okay god's will so god first of all god has a purpose plan for our life a blueprint right some of us may be in that place saying i don't know that i don't have clarity you know i don't know what everything is a little fuzzy praise god there's someone who knows it's very clear <laughs> right so it's best that we get to know him uh, who who has all the details in place so he has the blueprint he has the you know road map and uh, and praise god for that so some questions to ask ourselves you know uh, when we talk about god's will first question is you know am i aware of god's will in the choices i make right we make lot of choices lot of decisions um right from sun sun sunrise to sunset so am i aware of god's will this whole thing of god's will okay uh, second question to ask ourselves is um you know does god's will factor in my choices right is it part of my conversation is it something that i really think about or is it something that i you know i decide and i go to god and say lord you know please put your sign here you know it doesn't matter don't even read about it don't read through it just sign it lord it's fine it's all good right so does god's will um you know is it part of our thinking is it part of our factor and something that we really esteem and factor in the choices and the decisions in the in the plans that we make Okay, that's uh, that's something uh, to think about to ask ourselves and the third one is this that is this that you know does god's will automatically happen in my life okay we know that god is all powerful all knowing and uh, you know there's no one else that he is accountable to right so does it happen automatically in my life you know that song ki sara sara right some of the old timers will know right ki sara sara which means what will be will be 
what will happen will happen so why are you you know why are you thinking about all that and just just relax just chill uh, but uh, the chilling is okay uh, when things are going fine but when things are tough and difficult you can't sing ki sara sara right so uh, the thing is this you know does god's will unfold automatically uh, do i just go you know is it like something like fate that is like a you know big bulldozer just crushing all my plans all my desires and all my emotion doesn't matter this is it you know one big road roller just crushing us through and the other question is this do i need to discover pursue and make an active choice to walk in god's will okay so these are some questions to 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 think about when we actually think about god's will okay so here are some thoughts on god's will when we say god's will okay um i don't know what kind of experience you had with god's will right uh for me it it was this excitement on one hand the other hand oh i don't know you know he's going to he's going to say no no way for everything that i go to he's going to say no right so i don't know what kind of experience that you had but when you look at that word thelema which is used um to one of the words which is used for god's will in the new testament it means that god's desire god's intentions god's purposes his desire So as a loving father he desires some things for us he wants to bring some things into our life he wants to take us somewhere he has some purposes for us he has some plans for us and that's the picture that we have of god's will right it's not something to be afraid of it's not something to be apprehensive about and be you know paranoid of no god wants to bring these into our lives he's a good god amen he's a good father and he's saying my son my daughter i have these dreams i have these desires and want to bring these into your life right so god's will is good it's refers to his wish his choice his desire his intention his purpose and god's will is revealed in god's word now all of us know that god's word the bible is full of his thoughts his opinions but his will is revealed in god's word So the simple calculation is this if we get to know him we get to know his will right to get to know him we get to know his word so bible reading becomes very exciting this is because we get to know the author we get to know about the one who created it all right so we get to read his word meditate on his word we get to know him and when we get to know him we get to know his will so the word of god reveals god's will for us this is the beautiful thing that we see that god's word reveals that god is good that god is good you know sometimes you might say you hear that word god is good oh that's a simple statement that's nothing profound about it or the same like god is love i've heard it so many times but just think about it god is good and god has these dreams and desires for each one of us which means that these are good things good dreams good plans right he doesn't want to do us any wrong he's a good god so he wants to bring these good things into our lives so in pursuing god's will we actually pursue his heart we pursue him who is good right so his word reveals his will um this is what psalm 34 and verse 8 says oh taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the man who trusts in him oh taste and see which means oh experience taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the person who trusts in him psalm 100 and verse 5 for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations the lord is good so god's will for us is always good is always good right it might seem like a difficult thing in some places and sometimes but his will for us is always 
always good. And if we can settle that in our heart, you know, there'll be no room for doubt or apprehension. We'll just pursue Him. God's will for us is always good. What does the scripture say? Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. You know, many times we go through this, uh, we go through this crossroads many times in our life, right? And we, we ask this question, oh, what, what will happen and is God there at all? Sometimes we have these questions. What is God doing? I can't seem to have clarity. But have this understanding that His will for us is always good. His thoughts for us are thoughts of peace and not of calamity. Amen. Psalm 145 verse 8 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. Verse 9, The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Okay. So a couple of more things about the will of God. God's will is not something that is out of reach. Right? We make that statement in our conversations, God only knows. Who's going to win IPL? God only knows. <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? God only knows. And God only knows is, a, is a, actually a true statement. Right? God only knows. Great. It's, he knows it. Yes. But not in the way we say it. Right? Uh, that could change. That can change. God only knows. But God knows it all. And the fact is this, you know, when we encounter verses like this, Romans chapter 11 and verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. For who has known, verse 34, who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor? Now, when we encounter these verses, you know, we just come to that place of resting and say, God knows best, man does not know, I do not know, and I'm easy, I'm okay with that, right? But if you read through chapter 11 and go on to chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2, um, Romans chapter 12 talks about how we need to present ourselves as a living sacrifice so that we can prove His will. It's good, acceptable, and perfect will. Prove meaning that we come to that place of examining, approving after testing. So His will is good. His will is not beyond our understanding. He wants to, in fact, reveal Ephesians 5.17, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, another scripture, very encouraging scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Eyes has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So these are good things which we have not, you know, experienced in our senses. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. So in our natural senses, we've not yet seen that. But this is what, you know, verse 10 says, but God has revealed them to us. What is He revealing? He's revealing these very things that our eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man. So God revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things. So God reveals by His Spirit. So He wants to reveal these to us. So we can, be, we can be bold, we can be strong. Yes, I know someone who knows everything, knows my future, and He's willing to reveal these to me. He's willing to reveal these to me as I walk with Him. You know, maybe at this stage in life, he is saying, okay, my child, you know, I'll, I'll put on some weight for you. You know, you carry that load, right? I'm revealing these things. And when I build strength and when I go on, you know, he'll reveal more and progressively reveal more. But the thing is this, the Holy Spirit reveals them to us, okay? So the Holy, the, so the God's will is not beyond our understanding, right? He chooses to reveal by his Spirit. Okay, so what happens to us when we, when we seek and we, we do God's will and we follow God? You know, there are some, many outcomes maybe, but just three we want to see, right? There's stability and endurance. When we do the will of God, there's stability, strength, and endurance. Now maybe I was saying, you know, I need strength. Right? 
I need strength. I'm like, you know, I'm just being blown by the wind. I feel so weak. There's stability and strength when we do the will of God. And this is what uh, we read in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17. And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. It means stay, continue, dwell, remain. Right? He who does the will of God abides forever. He's bringing that stability. He's bringing that strength for those who need. And the Lord Jesus says, you know, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a person who builds his house on the rock. You know, there will be times when there will be storms and wind and the waves and, and all that, but that house will remain. So God wants us to have that stability and endurance. And he's saying, you know, my will is good. My will is good. Do it. Follow it, and it's going to bring strength into your life. You will be like that house that is founded on the rock. Yes, there will be times, testing times, uh, trials and challenges, but you will stand, you will be strong, and you will endure the test, the test of time, right? Second thing is we walk into the fulfillment of the promises of God when we obey His will, when we do His will. We are excited about the promises, and we say, okay, God, you promised. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Show me, Lord, when is going to happen? You know, I just want to see it. In Hebrews 10 and verse 36, talking about the will of God, it says, for you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Right? Of course, it's talking, the context is getting, entering into the promise, the, the, uh, the redemption, uh, the full redemption and so on after you have done the will of God. So doing the will of God or faithful endurance in the midst of difficulties to obey God's word will actually unlock, we will find ourselves walking in fulfilled promises. Right? Maybe there's something, you know, if, there's thinking, if you're thinking, when will I see this? Maybe we need to actively pursue the will of God and, and walk in the will of God, obey. And the third thing is also discernment. Some of the outcomes is, you know, John chapter 7 and verse 17, if anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. The words of the Lord Jesus is bringing spiritual discernment. He's saying, you will know, you will know my words, you will know my voice, you will, you will hear it and you will know it. How? when you will to do His will. When we decide, when we posture our hearts and say, Lord, I choose to do your will, God. I choose to do your will. We will walk in discernment. Okay. So here are, we're going to look at some, some scriptures which talk about, we'll talk very explicitly, right? There's no gray. It just says, this is God's will for you. This is the will of God, okay? And so let's look at these scriptures. Okay, the first scripture is this, 1 Peter 2 and verse 15, okay? For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So it starts by saying, prefacing it by saying, this is the will of God. What is the will of God? You do good. Now, it's easy to do good when the response is good. <laughs> right? It's easy to do good, do good when there's no criticism. It's easy to do good when there's always encouragement saying, wow, wow, fantastic. Right? It's easy to do good when there's no hostility. But here the context is this. There's persecution. People are being persecuted for their faith. And, he's, and Peter is saying, you know, continue to do good. Do the good thing. Do the right thing. Right? And maybe some of us are in that place saying, you know, I've been doing good, but I'm not getting anything in response. Right? I'm not getting anything in response. Maybe it's, uh, you know, in, in the environment we are in, maybe it's office, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe different environments, but he's saying, but by doing good, you will silence the voice. You will silence the voice of ignorance. Uh, you will silence the ignorance of foolish men. Right? So do good. The second thing is this, okay, so I, I, I must, you know, I must give a warning here. It's like, uh, you know, it's like going one level up 
right, in your games. When you play the game, you go to the next level, it becomes harder, right? So these four points are like that. It becomes harder and harder to hear, right? Okay, here's the second thing. Second thing is this. 1 Peter 3 and verse 17, he says, For it is better, if it is the will of God, to suffer for doing good rather than for, or doing good than for doing evil. Okay, saying, if it is the will of God, it is better to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. One more verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 19, same book. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to Him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Now that hurts, right? Those who suffer according to the will of God, now that itself is, you know, kind of finding it difficult to go down, but it says, let them commit their souls to Him and in doing good as to a faithful creator. Okay. Now, a little bit about suffering. You know, we suffer because of various reasons. Okay? We could suffer because the whole creation is in the bondage of corruption. Romans 8 talks about that. Right? Because of general sin, there is death, there is decay, there is suffering introduced into the world. Right? There is suffering that happens because of that. There is suffering because of our own action or inaction. Right? We, we cross the red light and we get fine. And we can't say, no, 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 I was going to church. You know, I'm, I'm being persecuted. <laughs> you know, we, we don't give our reports in time or we, in the office we don't do our work, we do a shoddy work. Well, we will, we will get pulled up, we are accountable and people will ask, there are some people who will ask, you know, uh, what happened? I can't say, you know, I'm, I'm the only believer <laughs> in this place. I'm being, suffer, I'm, I'm being persecuted for my faith, right? We suffer because of our own action or inaction. So there's suffering because of that. There's also suffering because Satan oppresses and he takes authority, the authority that we give him. Give him. You know, he's a defeated foe, but uh, because of deception and all that, he tries to oppress. The Lord Jesus said, the thief comes. Thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. John 10 verse 10. He says, but I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more ab abundantly. So suffering happens because of satanic oppression. Suffering happens because of divine judgment. Suffering, suffering happens because we do the right thing. We suffer because we are doing the right thing. We might be striving against sin. We might be living a life as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, and there is suffering. Okay. So what do I do? in the will of God, saying, commit your soul to Him. Meaning our thoughts, our, our decisions, our choices, our processing, everything commit to Him as to a good creator, as a wonderful creator. And you commit to doing good. Commit to doing good. Right? If we would make that choice, you know, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to make a commitment to do the good thing, to do the right thing no matter what, right? And um, this is the will of God. So we see that God is backing us up. And backing us up, we will experience His hand of comfort, His strengthening, His inspiration, His assurance, even in the midst of walking that path. Now, we are not talking about you know, domestic violence or abuse, you know, saying that I will continue to be here. No, we, are, we need to move ourselves to a place of refuge and protection. So we're not talking about, you know, violence or abuse uh, here. We're talking about us living a life of a believer, of a Christ follower. And because of the decisions that come out of that, there is suffering. Right? So Scripture declares very categorically, this is the will of God, that we will continue to do what is good uh, if it is the will of God to suffer. The third thing is this. It is God's will. Okay, we're looking at 1 Thessalonians 4 and verses 3 to 6. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. This is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage 
uh, and defraud his brother and so on. But he says, this is the will of God, your sanctification. Your sanctification seems very old-fashioned, right? Uh, but I just want to say that this, this word is really trending in the word of God right now. Right? It's really trending in the church. It's really there. You know, every recommendation is there. Sanctify it. Be sanctified. You know, sanctification. This is the, sanct this is the will of God. That we, wish, we should obtain, abstain from sexual immorality. And when we see, when we encounter these standards, and you know, we, we sometimes have our own standards, saying, I'm not doing that, so it's okay. I'm not living like that, so it's okay. I'm not living in sexual, sexual immorality, or I'm not living with someone so, you know, out of wedlock, so it's okay. But God's standards are, you know, God's standards, right? And the beautiful thing is this that he wants to journey with us in this whole thing of sanctification, right? He wants to speak to us. He wants us to have those conversations and strengthen us and journey us into victory, journey with us into victory in this thing called sanctification. So a couple of things, you know, for sanctified lifestyle, how can I, you know, some keys to sanctified living, uh, you know, two things. One is walking in the spirit, walking in the spirit. Scripture is very clear. Uh, it says, Galatians 5, verse 16, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right? So if you walk in the Spirit, walk meaning, uh, you know, live our lives. It's not a one-time thing, but it's a continuous thing. Live our lives as prompted by the Spirit of God, as ordered by the Spirit of God, as led by the Spirit of God. So it's a, it's a journey, it's a conversation. Right, every it's 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 a partnership. The so Holy Spirit has come to help us in that. It's a joyful thing, right? It's a joyful thing because every time we obey, He fills us with joy and peace. So it's a joyous thing to walk in sanctification, right? It's not a boring thing. It's not a dull and serious thing that we need to go through with a long face. But it's a joyous thing. It's something that we can rejoice and celebrate and say, "Hey, I'm walking in sanctification." Amen. Right? We make those choices and say, I'm walking in sanctification. So this, you know, this thing of um, walking in the Spirit really resets the algorithm for all our searches. You know, maybe it's a YouTube search, maybe it's something on Instagram. Really resets the algorithm. Right? So your recommendations that pop up are completely different. Hallelujah. Right? Sometimes like, these guys, YouTube guys are making me do it. You know, they show all these things and, uh, you know, it just pops up and... But what if the algorithm is changed? Sanctification does that. Changes, recreates, resets the algorithm. Amen. Resets the things that are recommended. Resets the thought that comes to us. Resets the desires in our hearts. So, it's not like saying, comparing, I'm not like that person, I'm not like this person, but... But really to take our phone or mail, our laptop and maybe give it to our spouse and say, you know, you, you do the search. You you'd see the YouTube search. You see the thing. You know, you, will, you won't find anything. You won't find anything that you can, you know, point a finger at. To have that confidence, right? To walk in that sanctification. And, and believe me, it is possible. It is possible. He wants to lead us in victory. His desire, his desire is that... His wish is that, his dream is that, that the church will walk in sanctification for his glory. Amen. So it is possible. Don't cancel out and say, no, it's not possible in this side of heaven. Of course it is possible. Um, the second thing, the second key to sanctified living is the renewing of our mind. Paul writes in Romans 12 and he says, Beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And verse, tw verse 2, he says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, which means a renovation, remaking of your mind. So by the, with the renewal and the renovation of our thoughts and thinking, our actions will be sanctified. For this is the will of God, our sanctification. The fourth one, the last one is this. This is the will of God. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
The question is, how can I give thanks? In this valley, how can I give thanks? In this dark tunnel that I'm going through where I don't see any light, how can I give thanks? In this downward spiral that I'm on, how can I give thanks? The other thought could be, do, do, does that mean that I should give thank for, thanks to God for the suffering? Give thanks for the fever? Give thanks for the cough and cold? You know, do I give uh, thanks to God and say, God, I thank you, I have a broken arm? No, that's not what Scripture says. We know the things that He took for us on the cross, right? So that we can walk free from it. So when we give thanks, we are giving thanks to God because He's the one who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. And this is the victory over the world, our faith. Right? Just read that scripture. It says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. And it says, this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So we give thanks to God saying, Lord, I thank you, God, that you are walking with me in the fire. Lord, I'm doing good. I'm doing my best, God. And, uh, you know, I'm putting it all together, God, but I thank you that you're walking with me. I thank you that you're in with me in the fire. I thank you that in the waters, go, God, this seems to overwhelm me, God. You are with me, God. You are with me, God. I'm walking through that tunnel, oh God, but I thank you that you are the light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. And uh, he feels our pain. You know, he sees those tears and those sighs. He's saying, how long, oh God, how long? He sees that because he's a good father. And his desire, his wish is to take us through. Is to take us through, walk with us. Amen. So the scripture is saying, give thanks in all things. Give thanks. Because He will take us through. He is the answer. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the bondage breaker. He is the liberator. So give thanks. Give thanks. He is the, the glory and the lifter of our heads. So give thanks. Amen. Amen. And um, we, we, we find that example in Scripture. Paul and Silas in prison. You know, giving thanks, singing praises in that prison in Philippi. They've been beaten. Their feet are in stalk. Um, they've been, you know, their, fa their backs are probably bleeding. Skin has been opened. And they are sitting there. And people are listening. The other prisons, uh, prisoners are listening. And they are praising. And they're singing praises to God. We can be so full of the Spirit of God. We can be so full of the Word of God. We can be, uh, you know, our minds can be renewed with the truth of God's Word. Is it challenging? Is it difficult? Oh, yes, it is. But God says, you know, you give thanks. And our declare, when we give thanks, when we declare, when we actually, in, in our thanksgiving, when we declare who God is, that's the key for deliverance. Right? Those doors are being opened even as we declare, God, I thank you, Lord, I'm going through this, but I know that I will come out strong. I know that I'll come out on the other end so that, you know, those are the keys, those are the doors that are being opened with the key of thanksgiving. So right now, maybe we can pray some prayers, you know, in the will of God and say, Lord, like Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, says, your kingdom come. Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we can boldly pray that prayer without a shade of doubt or without any hesitation because he's a good God. His will for us is good. Uh, the, the outcome, the end that he has envisioned for us is good. And in the journey, this good God is journeying with us. So we can pray and say, Lord, let your will be done. As it is in heaven, so also on earth. As it is in heaven, so also in my life, O God. As it is in heaven, so also, O God, in my family, O God. Let your will be done, God. Lord, in my family, in my marriage, in my work situation, God, workplace, God, in this breakthrough that I'm seeking, O God, let your will be done, God. Let your will be done, God, as it is in heaven. So also. So you can pray that. We can pray that. 
Psalm 143 and verse 10 is yet another prayer on God's will. It says, um, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Teach me to do your will, O God. The many confusing voices, God. I should do this and that. And, and God, you are the way, O God. I, I lean to you, God. You speak and teach me to do your will. So it's about relationship. It's about, you know, submitting to his teaching and saying, Lord, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to learn. I put away my pride. I put away everything, God. Teach me to do your will. Cause me to walk, lead me in the land of uprightness for your spirit is indeed good. Luke 22 and verse 41, the prayer of the Lord Jesus, 41. When he, has, when he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. A prayer of submission to the will of God. A prayer of submission, saying, God, not my will, God. I feel so strong about this, but God, I submit. I bring myself under your lordship, God. For you are good, not my will, but yours be done. You know, my wife and I, we, we actually came, uh, I mean, I know my wife, right, from children's church days, right? Um, we knew each other those days, Sunday school. So uh, we knew each other from those days. And then we got romantically inclined in college, right? And both of us were not believers. So we, we kind of uh, got romantically involved. Is, is that the right word to use? Romantically inclined. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> we were involved. Uh, we had plans of getting married uh, and so on. This is in college. Uh, we, I would highly not recommend this for all college students, okay? <laughs> There's a disclaimer. So uh, anyway, so we kind of had our plans laid out and we said, okay. Uh, but then um, something good happened. I came to know the Lord as Lord and Savior. And we had these conversations, you know, you know in our uh, youth fellowship uh, about God's will. Man, you need to do God's will. You need to find out life partner is a major choice. You better find out if it's God's will. You know, all these conversations happening. And so I was like scared, you know. God, what now? What next? She's not a believer. I'm a believer. Now, even if we are believers, now what is your will, God? And so my understanding of God's will was, yeah, he's going to say, fail. In this situation, that's it. So I was like praying, God, something, you do something. And I, you know, I, so uh, my wife was actually studying in Ch uh, Chennai that time, WCC. So she came down for one vacation. And then I said, uh, you know, uh, I wasn't a very bold Christian also. So that added to the complication. So I was like, um, you know, I'm serious about going to church now. I'm serious about youth fellowship. Um, and also, I don't know what God's will is about us. Oh, that was like, you know, striking the match for the explosion. I don't know what God's will is. So I think we should, um, you know, take it easy. So she was like, maybe this guy is seeing someone else, you know, and he's bringing all this religion and all this Christianese to wriggle out of this. So uh, she was very upset, as you can understand. Um, so she was like, a lot of tears, you know, that one year, a lot of challenges, and I'm like, God, every time somebody talks about God's will, I'm like crying, you know, there's a sick feeling in my stomach. But uh, then, one December uh, of the same year, she came to know the Lord. Hallelujah. I was rejoicing. Praise God. At least one hurdle is cleared. She's now, you know, she's, she knows the Lord. But then, she had these questions. She had this dilemma. What if it's not God's will for me to marry you? Right? And I said, hey, this is a good problem. You know, I was going through this all, these, all this while and welcome, welcome to the club. So she was like, I don't know if it's God's will for us. Uh, and this is what we did. We said, Lord, if it is your will, you know, a prayer of submission. It was a painful thing. And we had known each other for many years, as you can, you know, as you heard. Many years, good friends and so on. So uh, we said, Lord, if it is your will, God, uh, if it is not your will, you know, 
I don't know, we were at a place, I, even if God said, this is my will, I don't think I was at a, at a place to really understand, you know, receive that, know that, um, spiritually. But God is good. He's a good father. Right? So we prayed that prayer individually. I don't think we prayed together. Individually, we just said, God, we commit this matter into your mighty hands, God. If it is not, if we need to go separate ways, oh yeah, God, we are okay, but it's painful. I don't know how to cross that bridge. I've not reached that bridge. I don't know how to cross that bridge, but Lord, I'm just positioning myself, posturing myself. Lord, I'm okay to do that. And I think she also did the same thing. I'm okay to, we are okay to do that, God. And you won't believe me that from that time onwards, from that time onwards, there was momentum. Right? I didn't have to go to that awkward thing of, you know, visiting my mother-in-law and say, I want to take your daughter's hand in marriage. I didn't, have, I didn't even need to do that. The parents actually met, my parents, and they said, you know, I think these guys, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of phone calls, you know, those days, uh, landline, right? Landline, the landline is always engaged. That's the only phone in the house, and this is what is happening. People are saying, whenever we call, you know, you guys are, uh, your phone is engaged. So all that is happening, and so... They said, uh, I think we need to do something. Yeah, you know, we'll ask them, check with them, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll plan ahead. So I didn't even have to go through that thing. I just had to say yes. I had to say yes. <laughs> the thing is this, you know, we had to go through that painful time, painful season of saying, God, if it is your will, not our will, Lord. Lord, I pray that you'll take this cup, but God, not my will, but yours be done. Amen. I just want to say that he's, the Lord is not sitting with a hammer to, you know, br to, to just drop the hammer, to drop that sword and saying, you know, this is it. The Lord wants to talk to us. He wants to walk with us through this thing called life. He knows the challenges. He knows what is ahead. And that is why he's saying, you know, my will for you is good. My plan for you is good. And I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. I just want to call the worship team up. And I want to encourage us to, you know, uh, pray those prayers. Start praying. Um, the Word of God declares in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints, listen to this, according to the will of God. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So even as we pray these prayers, you know, just begin to just pray in the Spirit, just between you and God, because He's making intercession, those perfect prayers, according to the will of God. He's making those intercessions. So maybe let's, uh, let's just begin to pray. Let's begin to pray and say, Lord, maybe you can close your eyes, and if you want to stand up, you, you can. If you want to, you know, kneel down, you can. But just say, Lord, let your kingdom come. When we say your kingdom come, we are saying, Lord, your rule and your reign. It is not an autocratic dictatorship, but it's theocracy, and it's everything involved with grace and favor and justice and goodness. And so, God, you pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives, O God. Let your kingdom come, Lord. Let your will be done, O God. And maybe we can pray, Lord, teach me to do your will, God. Teach me, Lord. Open my eyes to see you. Open my ears to hear you, God. Lord, the things that my eyes have not seen, my ears have not heard, oh God, you're willing to bring in through the revelation by your spirit and by your word, oh God. So God, lead me in your way, God. Teach me to do your will, oh God. Teach me to do your will, O God. Empower me to do your will, O God. Empower me, O God, to live in sanctification, God. Empower me, O God, to give thanks in all circumstances and in all places, O God. Yes, Lord, empower me, O Father God, to do good, O God. Empower me, O Father God, to walk that path, O God. If it is your will that I should suffer for a while, for a season, even while doing good, O God, empower me, strengthen me right now, O God. 
Let's worship the Lord for some time. Just even as we pray, let's continue to pray. Here, uh, Isaiah 41 and verse 10. There's a lot of I wills listed here. Um, Fear not, says the Lord. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You can say an amen to that and say, Yes, Lord. I posture myself to do your will. Even as you release all these I wills, I will strengthen and I will uphold. I am your God. It's another scripture which testifies to God. It's Zephaniah 3 and verse 17 and it says, The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Hey, that's our God. He will. He releases these. The scripture testifies to these He wills. It says, this is who God is. And God Himself says, I will do this. So this, if there's anyone here, you know, you, you don't know the Lord Jesus and you want to invite Him and say, Lord, I will follow you. You know, this is the time to do that. Just invite Him into your heart and say, Lord, I will follow you. Come into my heart, Lord. Come into my life, O God. You know, in response to His I will, you can respond and say, yes, Lord, I will. And for those of us, you know, it's, maybe it's, it's been a tough journey. Tough journey. We are in that tunnel right now. We are in that fire right now. The Lord says, I will uphold. The Lord says, be not dismayed. He says, I am your God. I will strengthen, I will help. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And he's saying, God, who will lift me up? Who is my support? The Lord says, I am your God. I take that responsibility. 
Lord says, there could be no other human being taking that responsibility. But I step into your life. I take that responsibility. I take your hand and say, I will do that. So don't be dismayed. The mighty one will say, he rejoices over us with gladness. He's quieting that tempestuous and turbulent heart. All those emotions raging, all those storms raging. He's quietening us with his love. Let your heart settle down. Be rooted in the love of God today. And he rejoices over us. Literally singing and dancing over us. Right now. Because you are precious. You are precious to Him. So let us turn our eyes upon Jesus. We look forward to His wonderful counsel of Mighty God, Prince of Peace. Yes, you are. In the light of your glory, in the light of your grace, we sing, listen, all hands lifted up and we sing as we turn, Lord, we turn, we say yes to you, we say I will, we will, oh God, and we look forward. praise you Lord we give thanks to you Jesus yes Lord we thank you God we thank you Lord we thank you Lord yes Lord our hearts are drawn to you God drawn to your presence God like no other there's no other God but you there's no other Savior but you God yes Lord even if a nursing mother forgets her infant oh God you are there you will watch over Lord you've carved oh God our names in the palm of your hand oh God and you say he who touches you touches the apple of my eye oh God we have you God Heavenly Father we have you as our God and we seek to walk in your will Lord knowing your will knowing you Jesus Walking in intimacy, God. Something that we will seek wholeheartedly and pursue wholeheartedly, God. From this time forth. Jesus, we thank you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.